Welcome to Good Friday Worship. As we gather to remember Jesus' life-giving death, we continue our worship from last evening. One word here is that sometimes the internet connection is a little iffy with the upload, and if your picture gets fuzzy or a little choppy, it's because of that. We begin our worship tonight with one of my favorite hymns, There in God's Garden, and I invite you to either sing or listen as you are comfortable.
Let us pray. Merciful God, your Son was lifted up in the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So shall he startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them they shall see and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. Yet they made him grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
unfortunately, I guess we're having some technical problems, and you missed um, Janine singing uh, Via Dolorosa, which was really beautiful. In the couple of years that I've been at ULC, I've come to really appreciate and love the Seven Last Words service that we do on Good Friday afternoon. Uh, it's a very powerful and moving worship experience. At the same time, uh, I've really also missed the Good Friday reading of John's Gospel account, which is the usual lectionary reading. Um, and other than Good Friday, we never read that. So since we can't do the three-hour, seven-last-word service with seven preachers, I'm going to read um, John's Passion for you this evening. John's Passion narrative is very different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In Matthew and Mark, you get this picture of the suffering Jesus who is too weak to carry his own cross, and so Simon of Cyrene has to carry it. And the only thing that Jesus says uh, from the cross in Matthew and Mark is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he dies alone and abandoned, and it feels like a tragedy. In Luke, you also have a similar picture where he is too weak, Jesus is too weak to carry his cross. But you don't get the quite intense picture of suffering uh, because he doesn't say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Instead, uh, Jesus asks God to forgive those who uh, crucified him. And he tells the thief, uh, today you will be with me in paradise. And as Jesus dies, he then commends his spirit to his father but there is still very much a sense of tragedy. John's picture, however, is completely different. For John, this is Jesus' hour, and it's what Jesus came to do. Through the early part of the Gospel of John, you hear Jesus say a couple of times, my hour has not yet come, my hour has not yet come. Well, here at the beginning of his passion, he says that this is his hour. And rather than being a tragedy, for John, this is the coronation of a king. The throne is a cross, and the thorns are really a crown. And Jesus, not the soldiers, is in control. Jesus carries his own cross, and the sign on the cross says that he is the king of the Jews, and it's written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. And Jesus isn't deserted in John. And he doesn't cry out in agony and distress, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Instead, he is surrounded by his disciples and by the women, and he takes time as he's dying to care for his mother. And when Jesus has finally accomplished everything, when he's accomplished our salvation, he triumphantly shouts, it is finished, and he willingly dies. You see, John invites us to look at the passion with a totally different set of eyes. John pulls back all the noise and focuses on who Jesus is in this moment. He blocks out the blood and shrieks and pointing and laughing and he says, don't be misled by this scene. Look with different eyes because something really different is happening here. And God enters into the crucifixion and is triumphant. And God enters into our crucifixion moments, our pandemic moments, and is triumphant too. That's the promise that we hold on to, especially this Good Friday. As I read John's Passion now, you'll be seeing artwork that depicts the crucifixion uh, and it is artwork from around the world and across the centuries. But it's not just any artwork. It's artwork that depicts John's profound understanding of the crucifixion. Uh, I don't know what's going on.
hoping we have the technical problems fixed. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing that all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed him, Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly into the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews came together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. Then Jesus replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked him, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, 
Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciples, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The Gospel of the Lord.
We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. May God be merciful and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth and your saving health among all nations. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. I invite you to join me in prayer and join in singing the Kyrie with me. Let us pray for the church throughout the world, that you will guide it and strengthen it to bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray for presiding Bishop Elizabeth and our Bishop Craig, for all servants of the church and for all people of God. Help them to do faithfully the work to which you have called them. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray for the Jewish people the first to hear the word of God and to receive God's law, that they may receive the fulfillment of God's promises. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. We pray for those who do not share our faith in Christ Jesus, that you will gather them into your embrace all who call out to you under different names. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray for those who are sick with COVID-19, for families who grieve the loss of their loved ones, for healthcare professionals who care for the sick, and for an end to this pandemic. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Give wisdom to those in authority so that they will guide us safely through this health crisis. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray for those in need and those who are lonely and isolated. Give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray for all our concerns and desires, those we've spoken and those that are deep within us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. At this time, I'd like to invite you to virtually gather around the cross and silently bring your prayers and concerns to God. And then after this time of prayer, our worship will end quietly with Janine singing, Were you there when they crucified my Lord?
True. 